right guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you how I built this simple makeup vanity slash disc. So I actually decided to build this project because I've had a lot of requests lately from people reaching out to ask if I had makeup vanity plans because they wanted to build one for their daughter or their niece or whatever. Now unfortunately I did not have plans for that at the time so I thought it would be a really fun project to just put together and share. So this is the part where I usually say that if you're ready to get building, let's go, but my lav mic crapped out on me while I was filming this intro, so let's just dive right in. I just got a new tripod for my camera, so if things look weird during this video, it's because I'm still figuring out what the heck is going on. <laughs> if anybody wants to know, my plan for this project is right here handwritten on a piece of not even full-size notebook paper. So I will have much better printable plans for you available in the video description in a link down there. To kick off this project, I started by grabbing some three quarter inch birch plywood, like I kind of tend to do for many of my projects. I didn't grab a full sheet since I had some partial sheets that I needed to use up. However, I've got a complete plywood cut diagram showing all of the cuts from a full sheet in the plans. I trimmed down my pieces using my circular saw and Craig cutting guides. A common question that people often ask about this is if I rough cut my plywood using these tools and then cut them to final dimensions on the table saw. And the answer is no, I don't have time to cut things twice. These are my final cuts. However, for narrower strips, I usually do cut the width using my circular saw and then cut the length on my miter saw just because it's quicker. I trimmed down the back, sides, and bottoms of the main body of this desk and laid out my pieces on my workbench to kind of visualize how they'd go together. I marked all the edges that will be exposed in the finished project and applied iron-on edge banding to those edges. This is always a good time to just turn on the radio and zone out for a few minutes. Once the edge banding was applied where needed, I drilled three quarter inch pocket holes to assemble. First, I attached the side and bottom panels to one end of the back. Then I flipped it over and repeated for the other side. I measured and marked where to install the inside panels and once it was attached to the back, I then secured it to the bottom panel as well. This was a pretty small, tight space, so I had to use a shorter drill bit, but you could also use a 90 degree drill attachment as well. Now I needed to add the top supports on each section. I used some scrap plywood strips for this. The exact width of these don't really matter as long as they're the correct length. They're basically just used to attach the top panel later. Speaking of later, I went ahead and added these now, but in a later step, I will have to remove them because they're kind of in the way. So if you build this, you may want to wait until later to install these pieces. You'll see when we get there. For the center section, I cut some plywood pieces to glue and screw into each side. I made the center section about 13 inches deep so it inset the outside sections. This is totally optional and just for looks, I thought it just added some extra dimension and notice that I did edge band all exposed edges here before installing. Then I flipped this all upside down and glued and screwed the center bottom panel in place. Make sure to pre-drill here to avoid splitting the plywood. At this point, the main body of the desk top is complete, so I moved on to building the base. 
I made the base from two by twos and I mitered the ends of the legs five degrees so that they will slant inward slightly. Now, another common question that I get asked about using construction lumber in my projects is if I plane and join them first. And 99% of the time, I don't. Now, I do trim the rounded corners off on the table saw, but I think the reason that they don't normally look like the rough stuff that you get from the store is because I just sand them really well before using them. Never underestimate the power of a good sanding. So I'm going to assemble the base using dowels, just like dowel pins and wood glue. You could definitely use pocket holes. I just didn't want to see the pocket holes. So I'm using dowels. So I'm using this Rockler 3 8 inch dowel jig. A lot of people have asked me about this from past videos. I don't even know if they make these anymore. For a long time, they were out of stock online. I don't know if they're back in stock. I haven't really looked, but there's a bunch of different brands that make literally the exact same thing. Like looks identical instead of saying Rockler, it'll say like, I know Powertech makes one. Um, I know there are other brands too, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. But anyway, it's just a basic 3 8 inch dowel jig. You could also use like a drilling guide or just freehand if you can drill straight. But in case you're wondering what I'm using, it's a Rockler 3 8 inch dowel jig. It just has the holes, you clamp it and you drill. Here's the bit that comes with it. It's got a little stop collar on it. So you set it to the depth that you wanna drill. Very simple. I laid out my sides first, which consisted of two legs and a runner between them. I positioned the runner about four inches up from the bottom of each leg and used a square to make a mark on each side so that I knew where to drill the dowel holes. So this is actually for three quarter inch material and this is one and a half inch material. So theoretically I should probably drill like a hole here and a hole on the other side. I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna drill two holes on this side um, and they'll be like off center. They'll be concentrated here, but it'll be fine. Like we're not uh, holding hundreds and hundreds of pounds of weight here. Bub, can you get out of the way? Thanks. Make sure the mitered ends of the legs are slanting the same way before drilling any of the dowel holes. I clamped the jig on the center line of each mark and drilled. Then I used wood glue and dowel pins to assemble two identical sides. Once the sides were dry, I cut one more two by two that will run between them along the back. This piece will have five degree mitered ends to match the slanted legs. I'll be honest, I needed a second set of hands here, but I just had to make do. I needed to mark along the back edge, so I just kind of tried to hold these pieces in place and mark as best I could. That was the hardest part of this whole project. After the marks were made on each side, I just drilled and assembled again using wood glue and dowels and clamped tight until dry. I used a long pipe clamp on the back edge with some scrap blocks to make sure that I didn't like damage the legs while clamping. And then I used some Rockler corner clamps to hold the sides good and square while the glue dried. Once it was dry, I gave the base a good sanding to remove all of the leftover glue residue. Then I test fit the top onto it. I forgot to first add wood glue, so I had to go back and add some. And then I made sure to center everything side to side and front to back. Here's where I had to remove the top supports because I just couldn't get into it to drill in to secure the base. This wasn't a big deal. I just removed the pieces so that I could pre-drill and drive two and a half inch wood screws into each leg at each corner. 
Then once the screws were in, I just put the top supports back in place. These were really easy to replace since all of the screw holes were already there. Next was adding the drawers, which is always my favorite part of every project. I installed 14 inch drawer slides into the two outside sections of the desk. I just used a scrap piece of plywood to make sure that they were three quarter inch inset from the front edge to allow for inset drawer fronts later. Now I dug around my plywood scrap pile to find the pieces to trim down for the door boxes since these pieces are pretty small. If you were starting with a full plywood sheet, you could obviously cut them from the sheet, but since I just have way too many scraps, I used what I had and trimmed all the pieces to the same width on the table saw first. Then I adjusted the blade height and the fence to cut quarter inch dados. I'll use these to install the door bottoms later. Now another common question that I get asked is if I use a dado blade for this. And for the drawer boxes, typically I don't unless I'm just making a whole bunch of drawers at once. Instead, I usually just make one cut, then adjust the fence and make another cut, then adjust one more time to clean out the middle until I have a quarter inch dado. It's not a perfectly flat and clean dado, but it works totally fine for drawer boxes like this since you're not actually going to be seeing the dado. I used pocket holes and screws to assemble two small drawer boxes and installed quarter inch plywood into the dados for the bottoms. Then I installed these onto the slides. I used quarter inch plywood scraps on the bottom to space the drawers up a little so that when they're installed, they won't like rub against anything on the bottom when they open and close. I've got a detailed guide on how to install drawer slides and drawer boxes that I will link in the video description. After the drawer boxes were in, I added the fronts. There are a ton of handy tricks for evenly spacing your drawer fronts, but to be honest, I just eyeball it. I positioned the front so that the gaps around the edges looked even, held it tight, and drove a screw from the inside to secure it. After the one screw was in, I made sure that the spacing was still good, then added the second screw. And I just repeated this for both drawers, obviously. The final part of the project was adding the top. I had cut the piece for the top earlier and set it aside, so now I just brought it back out. When this vanity desk is closed, I wanted the grain along the top to match, so I cut a piece of the overall size of the top first, then I just cut it into three pieces for the three sections for the top of the desk. Two for the sides and one for the flip top in the middle. After I applied edge banding and sanded them, I placed them onto the desk to make sure I got them all in the right order. I had to remove the drawer boxes in order to access the inside. If you didn't know, there are some small plastic tabs on the sides of the drawer slides that allow you to just kind of pull them apart. Since this space was so tight, I had to use a 90 degree drill attachment to screw in the top panels. I used this Craig brand one, but there are several brands that make these. I tried to get a shot of me getting the screws in the back, but clearly I failed. So here's a nice close up shot of my shoulder. Now for the exciting part, the flip sections. Let's start with the flip top. I used concealed hinges for frameless cabinets with full overlay doors for this. So I drilled out my cup holes to install my hinges using a Craig concealed hinge jig. Make sure to drill these on the right side so when it's flipped down, the grain still matches across the top. Then I secured the hinges to the back panel. I added one screw on each hinge, made sure it was going to work, then added the other two screws. These hinges have several adjustments to move the door in the X, Y, and Z directions as needed. So I used a little screwdriver to adjust until I had the spacing just right. Every brand is a little different, so the instructions that come with your hinges should tell you what screws to adjust and how to get your spacing kind of like you like it. After the flip top was on, the final part was adding the little flip front in the middle. 
I cut, edge banded, and installed hinges onto it just like I did for the top, then installed it into the center section and adjusted until everything opened and closed easily and the gaps were all even. To make it easier to stain, I think I'm gonna take <laughs> these things that I just installed, I think I'm gonna take them off um, but I'll at least have the screw holes and I won't change anything on the hinges. So I should, when I get done staining, just be able to like, just screw these right back on into the same holes and everything should be fine. And if not, I can still adjust the hinges a little bit, but I think it'll make it a lot easier to stain if these pieces are not attached. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't think about that before I attached them. I was just really excited and eager think to get them on and see what it looked like um, but anyway not a big deal either way I'm just gonna take these off now I debated on trying a new stain color but I chickened out and I went with early American now I'll be honest I do regret my decision and I really wish that I had just gone for it with the new stain color but it is what it is I actually think before I give this to its new owner, I'll probably end up painting it. But I just didn't have the time to paint it this week and staining was much quicker. After the stain was dry, I replaced the flip top and front and then added the drawers back. And here's just a tip, don't put the drawers back in until you've added a knob or a pull onto it because you won't be able to open it again. Don't ask me how I learned that. <laughs> and the final part was adding the mirror. I'm sharing some notes at the very end of this video and I'll discuss more about the mirror then, but this specific mirror is temporary. So I used some double-sided mounting tape to secure it until I could get a permanent mirror for this project. To install one permanently, I would probably recommend using some construction adhesive or some clips to hold it in place. And now it was ready to use. And besides not loving the color that I picked, I am really excited about how this turned out. It was a simple project, but a whole lot of fun to build. I hope you enjoyed watching it come together. Now I have a few notes that I wanted to discuss about the project. So I wanted to just share a couple of notes before building, just things to consider when you're building this project. So the first thing is the size. You'll notice that this is fairly small. And the reason that I built it that small is because the majority of people who were asking me for makeup vanity plans were asking me in order to build them for kids. So in my mind, a lot of times kids' rooms don't have a whole lot of space. So I thought I should probably build this fairly small so that it would fit in a kid's room. It would just, it would fit a kid. However, despite the fact that it is small, it is still standard height, so it can still fit an adult. But one thing to consider when building this, especially if you're building it for an adult or for somebody who's very tall, consider the eye height of whoever is going to be using it. So if I'm sitting here in my chair, my eye height is just about to the top of this. So even if I mounted my mirror all the way to the top, it's still gonna be a little bit high. I mean, a little bit low. My eyes are gonna be a little bit high, but I'm sitting in a chair that the seat height is 18 inches off the ground. So if I had a 16 inch tall chair or a 14 inch tall chair, that mirror height would be fine. Now I can raise the mirror height all the way to the top here, but one thing to consider is if I needed it even taller than the height of this, I can make my desk a little bit deeper. So that would make this taller, which would mean I can mount my mirror higher. Now, speaking of mirror, I know that this mirror is very undersized. When you look at it, it looks kind of wimpy. I'm well aware. I actually went to several different stores in town trying to find a 12 inch diameter mirror and nobody had anything. So I had to settle for this 10 inch diameter mirror. Now, ideally I would want a 12 inch diameter mirror. 12 inches is probably the maximum size that I can fit on this just because the space from the back to the front here is 13 inches. So if I get a mirror that's bigger than 12 inches in diameter, like 14 inches, I think that would look better. But the problem is that when I stick it on here, it's going to hit the top of this. Now, if I cut this about an eighth of an inch, like narrower, so that the top of it was an eighth of an inch down, 
it would be fine. The mirror would still sit above the top of this, but it wouldn't hit it because there's enough space in between. So just some things to consider when building this project. As far as the size of the desk, the size of the mirror, and the height that you need to mount it. Um, just kind of consider who's going to be using it, what chair they're going to be using it with, the height of their eyes, if this is going to be tall enough, and if not, whether you need to increase the size of the mirror, increase the depth of the desk, whatever. Phew. I feel like for such a small and simple build, this video was packed full of information. I truly hope that you found it helpful and enjoyable. And if you're still here, a huge thank you so much for watching. And until next time, friends, happy building.